Hey, how are you, my Coffee with Brenna friends? Grab your beverage and your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. I will tell you why I use this Bible later. Hopefully I remember. We're on week two of our preparing or of our Advent series, and today's topic is preparation. Preparation. I'm here at my church. I was supposed to be helping to unload a truck. The truck is not here yet. I have a rehearsal in an hour and 15 minutes, and I'm really hoping the truck arrives. Then I have an appointment, and then I have a meeting, and I'm thinking, when am I going to record Coffee with Brenna? So I needed my computer for the rehearsal, and I thought, let's try and do it now. But I wasn't very prepared. (laughs) So guess what? There's lots of Bibles on these shelves. I grabbed a Bible. Hopefully that didn't make you seasick. Grab your beverage, grab a Bible. It doesn't have to be the one you usually read. And it's relevant to our topic today of preparation. How do we prepare for Christmas? How do we prepare for celebrating Christmas? How do we prepare for Jesus' coming, both now and when he comes in the future? A couple of things I thought about. First of all, I read the, the scripture of the five wise virgins this week. It was just part of my regular Bible reading. And if you're not familiar, it's in Matthew 25. And I'm not going to read the whole story, but I encourage you to read it. You may be familiar with it. Jesus says, And the kingdom of God can be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Wait, you just said it was the parable, the story, the parable of the five wise virgins. Yes, we'll get to that. Now, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, they heard a cry, excuse me for scratching my face, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. And the wise answered saying, no, I, I just happened to pull up the new King James. No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy some for yourself. So they went and bought it, but they came back and it was too late. <sighs> so that's a weird, a weird, um, maybe a weird thing to read for preparation, how we prepare in this Advent season. But it's what popped into my mind. And, and a couple things I was thinking about as I read the story this week. Did they need their lamps lit so that the bridegroom would see them, literally see, oh, that's my bride. I don't know. I'm probably reading more into it than is meant to be, but how do we prepare? This morning I wasn't prepared to record Coffee with Brenna. I did have my computer, thankfully, and I did know I could get a beverage and a Bible, and I forgot my water bottle. Again, not prepared. I didn't have the oil for my lamp that I needed. Another way that we prepare, another way the Bible, I should say, talks about preparation is in Isaiah 40. This is often one of the readings for for this week of Advent. Comfort, comfort my people, says your your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received all. For the, from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. Sorry if you hear the background noise. It's busy here today. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And of course, that is a reference to John the Baptist, who prior was born prior to Jesus, and he called people for a baptism of repentance in preparation In fact, in Matthew 3, we read that in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And he he baptized them. So that's another preparation example. So how do we apply this to our lives today? How do we be prepared? Now, we don't love this word today, but we repent. We go before the Lord and say, God, is there any offensive way in me? That's what it says in Psalm 139, right? Search my heart. 
or David's prayer in what, Psalm 51, I believe, create in me a clean heart, O God. We quiet ourselves before the Lord and we repent of known sin and ask him to search our heart for sin that we may not have seen. One thing I love about Psalm 139, it says, search me, God, and know my heart. And I actually wrote a song based on this psalm, and I will link that. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. God, what am I anxious about? What is inhibiting me from preparing for the coming of the Lord? See if there is any offensive way in me. And Lord, in preparation for your coming, for your return, and even our celebration in this Advent season, lead me in the way everlasting. Oh Lord, lead me in the way everlasting. It's This is a simple message today. The way that we prepare is quiet, repentance, limiting distractions, remembering what the Christmas season is about. We talked to our kids. We decided the money we usually would spend on Christmas, we're going to get small gifts or a small gift and stocking stuffers. And we're going to save it for a vacation. We went on a vacation this summer. I know I, I posted a little video somewhere of my daughter saying, it's coffee with Brenda time. Um, <laughs> but we had so much fun. We went somewhere that's like two hours away. We didn't leave the state just because some of the travel things with having to get tested when you came back in the state. We mostly hung out at home. We went to a museum. We went and saw a couple of things. But we just hung out and had a good time, and they had a good time. So we're doing that a short two-day thing during the Christmas holiday, and we're going to focus on that rather than more stuff because we have enough stuff. And my friends all just said amen to that. So how do you prepare your heart for the Lord? Quiet reflection, repentance, so repentance isn't just confession of sin and asking for forgiveness of sin. It's turning the other way. It's thinking differently. What I've been working on my, with my struggle with food, thinking about it differently. Let God transform you into a new person, Romans 12, 2, by changing the way you think. It's not just saying, God, I'm so sorry I did that. God, I'm so sorry I did that. How do I... Empower me to not do it again. Lord, see if there is any offensive way in me and show me what the way everlasting looks like, Lord God. Quiet your hearts, friends. I'll put some, I had a recent Coffee with Brenna on distraction and I have some on quiet and I will put those in the show notes. If you want to think more about that, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for this time together, this time to reflect, this time to prepare for all you have for us, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God. See if there is any offensive way in us. Search our hearts and create in us a clean heart and transform us by changing the way we think, Lord God. Sorry, someone was like about to come in the room. I told you there's a lot going on. So we pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, friends. Please, I love comments, thoughts about this video. Till next time, thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.